is the golf ball going too far? That was a question that I asked recently in my new golfer's guide post over on Instagram and the answer that you came back with was quite resounding in one way. Let's get stuck into this video and find out what you've been saying. So in this video guys, we're gonna answer that question. Is the golf ball going too far? We're also, at the end of the video, gonna hear from some friends of mine who you'll probably know and get their answers and their input on the topic because it is a hot one at the moment. Is the golf ball going too far? How do we make it that Bryson seems to be the poster child for it? But there are other guys out there. You look at Brooks, you look at Rory, you look at DJ. There's a lot of people who are hitting the golf ball a long way, but, is that what it's all about? Let's find out in this video right now. So when I did a poll on Instagram, the resounding answer was, no, we shouldn't be rolling the golf ball back. And when I asked the question and asked for your feedback, there was lots of answers like these here now that we'll see popping up on the screen that we shouldn't be doing anything. If these guys and girls are going out there and working hard, becoming superior athletes, getting in the gym, building the bodies up, improving the technique, getting massive speeds, they should be able to reap the rewards of that hard work that they're putting in. It's not as if as well, if we were to just roll the golf ball back that because we've now limited it, it stops the likes of Bryce and Cameron Champ Rory. Zach Johnson isn't all of a sudden gonna be on the same um, playing field as those guys. It's just gonna knock it down for everybody. So it definitely isn't the answer. It's not just gonna curtail the big guys. There were answers as well, things like this that we saw that was talking about limiting the loft of driver, talking about limiting the ball that we had, which again, well, we just talked about limiting the ball, that's not gonna be the answer. Limiting the loft of driver is interesting, but as we've seen, Bryson's potentially um, looking at a, a low lofted driver in the shape of a four, five, six degree driver. And when we see the long drive um, champions as well, they have low lofts. They have long shaft 48 inch, and then they have low lofts. They're able to hit it very much on the up, you know, eight, nine, 10 degrees on the up, so they're adding loft to it. But then the skill element comes in, can they keep it straight? So maybe the loft could be an answer. But is it a problem at the minute? Personally, I don't think so. I think it's fantastic that these guys and girls are going out there and pushing the boundaries. If we wanted to keep the game the same, why would we evolve technology? We'd all still be playing with wooden golf clubs, with wooden shafts and wooden heads. We'd be playing with balls with feathers in them. We wouldn't be seeing these new exciting innovations in the game and we wouldn't be seeing that we're getting these supreme athletes now. If you look back to an era 15, 20 years ago on tour, a lot of the tour players were out on the drink beforehand. They were not taking care of the bodies. They were looking after themselves, but they weren't in the gym and turning over every leaf that they could do and every stone to find that 1% to make sure that they were working better. So I think it's personally fantastic that they're going out there and actually improving themselves and their games through the shape of distance. Now that being said, you've still got to be able to put and chip. If we see, obviously like I say, Branson is being used as the poster child for this because he's smashing it. Yes, he's got longer as we can see on these stats here from 2019 to 21. He's increased 20 yards on each one but also look at his putts and his um, short game. He's not first every time in those also. We're not seeing that he is the top in everything. Yes, it comes at an advantage to be going in with a wedge, but if you're not getting that wedge close and you're not holding the putt, it doesn't matter as much. If you were great at your driving, you were number one, then you were number one in wedge play and number one in putting, yes, then we would have maybe a little bit of an issue where we would see someone dominate maybe like Tiger would do. Now for me, what would the answer be? Personally, I think we could make golf courses a little bit tighter, maybe make greens a little bit firmer, but then we've got the other hand of the argument where we've got to look at what we're doing to our environment, what we're doing to the world. We can't keep making golf courses longer because we're going to run out of land. It's going to take more water to um, actually get out on the golf course and we don't have that. So it's gonna put a massive strain on the earth. So maybe growing the rough in, maybe adding some more trees to golf courses. But 
I don't personally know what the answer is at the moment. Let's head over to my friends now and see what their opinions are. Guys as well, if you are enjoying this video, do hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification. And as well, follow me on all my subscriber links down below for my socials so you don't miss another episode of The Golfer's Guide where I answer all your questions. Let's go over to Andy Carter and see what he has to say about the situation. Golf ball technology does not need to be changed. This is all a massive overreaction to one player going out of his way, getting in the gym, getting the dietitians, working his absolute backside off to hit the ball further than everybody else and overpower golf courses. That's not a problem. That's one man out of hundreds and hundreds of professional golfers. So no, I think the game as it is right now is fantastic, it's in a great shape. Golf courses could always be tighter, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It'd give them a different type of problem rather than just always talking about distances and yeah that's my view on it and that's a really nice jet ski so very much a similar opinion from myself there games in a great shape fair play to Bryson to go out there and do all the work golf courses could be toughened up a little bit let's head over to Peter Finch and see what he says also uh, Mr Fryer let's talk about the great distance debate so for me it is a problem and there does need to be some kind of equipment rollback to try and protect our game just a little bit the first thing I want to make clear is I actually enjoy watching players smash the ball a million miles I think it's entertaining to watch and I love to see birdies and certainly for many amateur golfers trying to make the game easier rather than harder that is an, arg that is an argument that is worth having However, for me, the distance debate really narrows down into a few specific areas. The first one is the longevity of golf courses. Because the fact is, because for professional golf, there are so, so many golf courses that they could be using to play events on. Beautiful courses such as Sunningdale. But Sunningdale will never be used to host a male professional event because it's just too short and they would absolutely tear it apart and that amazing design while still really good for many amateurs is simply not a challenge for the top professionals anymore and then that raises the problem well if equipment is only going one way it's quite simple let's just make some of these let's just make some of these golf courses longer the fact is we're running out of room and when you also start increasing the length of a golf course there's the extra cost and a lot of businesses and a lot of golf clubs aren't going to be able to afford this constant lengthening of these courses so that original challenge that was once there is slowly being lost now the second now the second thing and certainly what a lot of companies are going to argue about is that they've invested so much money into research and development to make their golf clubs as good as they can be to help every golfer and that's very true this should have been addressed a long time ago but as governing bodies of our sport, so the RNA and the USGA, they are not beholden to equipment companies. This isn't about profit and loss sheets for people selling titanium and carbon drivers. This is about protecting our game for future generations. So it's about time they actually stood up and did something about this. Is that likely to happen? Well, for the last few years, have anything to go by? Probably not. But Matt, thanks for having me on. Appreciate you letting me waffle, and we'll see you soon. And by the way, look at that for a setting. Oh my word. Hope you're doing all right back home, man. See you soon. Again, another set of interesting opinions there. I think we're all falling into the same camp. Finally, let's head over to Rick Shields and see what he has to say on the matter. Personally, for me, I don't want to see the golf ball roll back. I think it's one of the magical things about golf that you can play with the same equipment as the best players in the world. I think distance is a big talking point at the moment because obviously the biggest tour players in the world, guys like Bryson DeChambeau, Rory, Dustin Johnson, are evolving their techniques and their strength and their ability to hit the ball further to benefit their scores. I think distance in the average game, in the average golfer game, does not make a difference whatsoever. I don't see any benefit of, of having a golf ball roll back for the amateur game. And I, honestly, for me, it'd be such a shame if it rolled back for the professional game. I don't want it to. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen, though. I think time will tell. So again, very much the same opinion as um, myself and the other two guys previously. It's great to um, see and hear other pros' opinions on this and thanks to the guys for doing this. So where does the game go from here? 
not too sure. Personally, I think it's new and exciting that we're seeing this sort of golf. Maybe we change the golf course, who knows? Let's see what we get in the next couple of years. Guys, thanks for watching this episode of The Golfer's Guide. Stay tuned for lots more. Like I said, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications, and make sure you follow me on all my socials so you can get involved in the next show. See you there.